Hello everyone, we're going to take some time talking about something that we all use very often, and that is our tongue. It can be both beneficial and it can be dangerous. And when I'm doing something like this, like this podcast, where we're trying to, to study God's Word together, there's even a higher accountability for the words that are coming from my mouth. Um, and so this is an important thing to constantly remind myself and for all of us as believers um, to understand the accountability of the words that come out of our mouth, but also understand the power that we have with our with the tongue. And so we're going to look at some a lot of scripture today. Um, we'll see as far as we can get. This might end up being a two-parter. We'll find out. Um, it says in Luke chapter 6 and verse 44, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. In Matthew 12, 34, it says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. James 1, 19 says, My beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. In James 1, 26, it says, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. So you have all these warnings throughout Scripture about our tongue, and we're going to look at some more of those passages in just a moment. I think a good place for us to go as we talk about the dangers of the tongue, the dangers of the words that we say, and that, and that goes for those who are blogging or posting or commenting on social media as well. Those are your words. You, you might not be using your physical tongue, but you are using thought. You are um, using words to, uh, to explain an idea. Um, and you can do really bad things with that or good things with that. So we're going to look at um, James chapter 3. And the heading on this chapter in my Bible says the unruly tongue. And that is a fitting title for chapter 3 of James. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. There's a warning out the gate here in James chapter 3 um, that as leaders in the church, pastors in the church, leaders of small Bible studies, Sunday school teachers, theologians, there's a high accountability for what we say. There's a high accountability to God for the words that we say. And it's important that people don't take that lightly. It's important that people say, hey, yeah, I'll be a leader, but don't understand the accountability that comes along with it. Or people that pretend to be a leader or make themselves out to be a leader in the church and have no intention of thinking about the accountability that they have before God and other people. It's really dangerous. The Bible talks more about this in regards to that responsibility and accountability. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In 1 Timothy 4.12-16, it says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. 1 Timothy 1, 6 through 8. From which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling. Vain jangling, I, I like calling this the jangler complex. This is someone who likes 
to just hear themselves talk. They like the conflict. They like it when people get into arguments. Um, they're just talking for the sake of this. They're being sound. Vain jangling. Desiring to be teachers of the law. Understand neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know the law is good if a man use it lawfully. The word of God is a good thing. Teaching God's word is a good thing. But it is a dangerous thing if someone's trying to teach it and they don't know what they're talking about. They have no clue of what they speak. Um, as leaders in the church, pastors or people who are thinking about being a leader in the church, you know, we're not we're not authorities on the word of God. The word of God is the authority on and over us. Um, if we or any of us in the church think that we have authority because of a, a title. Um, or because of a degree, or because of experience, or because of faithfulness, we're greatly mistaken. Teaching and leading the church in the Word of God is a great responsibility that comes with great accountability. And if we attempt to be in that position without fully understanding the responsibility, understand you are still going to be accountable. If you're going to put yourself out there as a leader, Put yourself out there as an authority. <laughs> You're accountable to that. Uh, pastors and teachers are not the only ones who can cause trouble with their tongue, though. Even though I understand there's a higher accountability there, the reality is all of us, all of us, struggle with our tongue. We can all cause trouble with it. Um, and, of course, we all struggle with that because we're sinners. We're fallen. And once again... Some of us think we're doing really good with our tongues. And the reality is you're still lashing out on Twitter or on Instagram or on Facebook. And that's the same thing. It says in the second half of verse 2 in chapter 3 of James, If any man offend not in word... The same as a perfect man, and able to also to bridle the whole body. <laughs> it's like, man, if you if you never have any problems with your tongue and the words that you say, then you probably have it all figured out, don't you? If you think that you know I'm really good with my words, man, then you can just you can do anything. You just you can master anything, can't you? And we know that's just not true. In, in Proverbs twenty verse nine, it says this: Who who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Nobody can say that. We all struggle. Uh, with our sin. But the next couple of verses says this, verse 3 and 4. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, all the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. This passage he refers to our tongue as a bit in a horse's mouth or, or a rudder on a ship. You see, because our, our tongues, our tongues can change the course. They can change the course of someone's day. They can change the course of someone's life. Our tongue could change the direction or spirit of a church. Our tongues can help lead people to Jesus or our tongues can lead them away from Jesus. Proverbs 18.21 says this, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 15.1 says this, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. I talk about this often, and it's a pet peeve of mine. Some of the sweetest, kindest, loving people that I know mistreat people with their words in the community, especially like service jobs, whether it's like a restaurant or um, at the grocery store or supermarket. Don't 
talk to people like they're your servants. Talk to them like there's someone that's made in the image of God, that's loved by God and wants to be redeemed to God. That's how, that is how we should talk to people at the restaurant, the, the server, the waitress, the person stocking shelves at Walmart, the flea market. You don't know the impact you can make with your tongue on someone's life don't be quick to answer be slow to listen and this is we had a I had a whole conversation about this with my friend Roger Powell on listen learn and love and sometimes we're just way too quick to answer Your waitress could have had the worst day of her life. Then a Christian who knows Jesus walks in the door and all they do is tear them down because they're not fast enough or polite enough. careful what you do with your tongue. Point people to Jesus or you can point them to your prideful self. Death and life. And the power of tongue, I want to speak life into people. I want to speak hope into people. But I'm a sinner. I'm going to struggle with it. But please, please, when you're out in the community and you're going out to eat or going to the store, don't look at those people as, well, they work for this store and they should act this way and they should be this. Look at them first and foremost as a human being whom God created in his image. And maybe that'll change how you talk with them. Moving on, we see in verses 5 and 6, Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. What strong words. A little disrespect, um, a little gossip, a little coarse or harsh word, a, a little joke, a little mockery, a, a little fire can quickly get out of control. We understand this. We recognize this in, in reality, the danger of a, of a real fire. And if Satan is given the opportunity, he will use just a little thing that we said and use it to ruin a relationship. To break up a marriage, to destroy a family, destroy a church, a ministry. You see, a, a little fire, it can destroy everything. It can do it so fast. It can do it so rapidly. And that's the description that the tongue is given here in James. In fact, it says in Proverbs 26, 20, and 21, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail-bearer, the strife ceaseth. As coals are to, be, uh, are, as coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Psalms 39, 1 and 3, I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle with the wicked, uh, while the wicked is before me. My heart was hot within me while I was musing. The fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue. Proverbs 17, 27, He that hath knowledge spareth his words. Psalm 141, 3, Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. Proverbs 10, 19, In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth 
his lips is wise. We're going to talk more about this next week because we're short on time today. But understand this, your tongue. If you are a leader in the church, if you're leading a Bible study of any kind or making content like even this, you have accountability before God and before people to tell them the truth and to divide God's word truthfully, not to be a vain jangler. I just like to hear myself talk. I like to hear people get upset. Um, Understand that. Also understand that your tongue, it can change the direction of someone's day. It can change the direction of someone's life. Treat people around you the way that God would have you to and use your words carefully. And understand that you can ruin lives. You can ruin marriages. You can ruin families. You can destroy churches. You can burn a whole ministry down, a whole family down. That's the power of our words. Think through that. Think through that carefully before the next time you speak. Think through that carefully before the next time you comment or post or even share an article. And and we'll get more into this next week. Even if you're right, you might be wrong to say it in that moment or how you said it or wrote it or shared it power of the tongue can be a great thing or the verse we just read it can be set on fire of hell please subscribe like share and I hope you have a wonderful wonderful week God bless